Welcome back to Doctrine Forensics. I found a great article written back in March 2013 by Colin Smith, who has a Master's of Philosophy from the London School of Theology. He's a senior pastor of the Orchard Evangelical Free Church in the Northwest suburbs of Chicago, and his ministry extends through his radio program called Unlocking the Bible. Colin wrote an article back then that is still applicable for us today called The Seven Traits of False Teachers. I'm going to share this good, sound biblical teaching straight from the book of First and Second Peter. Grab your Bibles. We're going to walk through this teaching together. And a link for this article is below. We're going to get into this great teaching in just a second. Welcome back to Doctrine Forensics, where we take a biblical viewpoint and examine the teachings of pastors, teachers, evangelists, and so-called prophets and apostles, where we contest apostasy and kick back against the culture. Here at Doctrine Forensics, we tell everyone not to listen with an open mind, listen with an open Bible. So with that, let's get to it. There are also false prophets among you, just as there will be false teachers among you. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. There are no if, ands, or but in Peter's word. It's a clear and definite statement. There are false prophets among the people of Israel in the Old Testament. That's a matter of history. False prophets were a constant problem in the Old Testament, and those who falsely claimed to be prophets of God were to be stoned. The people rarely had the will to deal with them, so they multiplied causing disaster to the spiritual life of God's people. In the same way, Peter says, there will be false teachers among you. Notice the words among you. Peter's writing to the church and says, there will be false prophets among you. So he's not talking about new age people on television. He's talking about the people in local churches, members of local congregations. There's no such thing as a pure church this side of heaven. Let's keep that clear. You will never find it. The wheat and the tares grow together, Warren Worsby writes. Satan is the counterfeiter. He's the false gospel, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. He's preached by false ministers, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 through 12. Produces false Christians, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Satan plants his counterfeits wherever God plants true believers, Matthew 13, verse 38. Authentic versus counterfeit. How would you recognize counterfeit Christianity? In 2 Peter chapter 1, we read about genuine believers, and in 2 Peter chapter 2, we read about counterfeit believers. If you put these chapters side by side, you will see the differences between authentic and counterfeit believers. Number one, different source. We need to ask, where does the message come from? Peter says, quote, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus. And then he says that false teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. So the true teacher sources what he says from the Bible. The false teacher relies on his own creativity and he makes up his own message. Number two, different message. We need to ask, what is the substance of the message? For the true teacher, Jesus Christ is central. Quote, we have everything we need for life and godliness in him. For the false teacher, Jesus is at the margins. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them in. Notice the word secretly. It is rare for someone in the church to openly deny Jesus. Movements away from the centrality of Christ is subtle. The false teacher will speak about how people can change your life, but if you listen carefully to what he or she is saying, you will see that Jesus Christ is not essential to their message. Different position. We need to ask, in what position will the message leave you? The true Christian escapes the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Listen to how Peter describes the counterfeit Christian. Quote, they promise freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity, for a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. The true believer is escaping corruption, while the counterfeit believer is mastered by it. Number four, different character. We need to ask, what kind of people does the message produce? 
The true believer pursues goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. The counterfeit Christian is marked by arrogance and slander. They are experts in greed and their eyes are full of adultery. They also despise authority. This is the general characteristic of a counterfeit believer. Number five, a different appeal. We should ask ourselves, why should you listen to the message? The true teacher appeals to scripture. Quote, we have a word of the prophets made more certain and you will do well to pay attention to it. God has spoken and the true teachers appeal to his word. False teachers make a rather different appeal. Quote, by appealing to the lustful desires of sinful human nature, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. So true teachers ask, quote, what has God said in his word? End quote. The false teacher asks, what do people want to hear and what will appeal to their flesh? Number six, different fruit. We should ask ourselves, what result does the message have in people's lives? The true believer is effective and productive in his or her knowledge of Jesus Christ. The counterfeit is like a spring without water. This is an extraordinary picture. They promise much, but they produce little. Number seven. A different end. Where does the message ultimately lead you? Great question. Here we find the most disturbing contrast of all. The true believer will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The false believer will experience swift destruction. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Jesus tells us there will be many who will be involved in ministry and in his name, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Who are these people? They seem like the nicest people, but they do not believe in the authority of the Bible or the exclusivity of salvation in Christ. We welcome such people because they need Christ just as much as we do, but we must not allow them to have influence in the church. Second, skeptics will always be able to point to hypocrisy and inconsistencies in the church. They've always done it and they always will. One of the strangest reasons for not following Christ goes like this, quote, I've seen people in the church who are hypocrites, end quote. So you will not follow Christ because some people who claim to do so are hypocrites? The existence of counterfeits is never a good reason for rejecting the genuine. Peter essentially tells us, of course there are counterfeit Christians. Of course there are teachers who do more harm than good. What else would you expect in this falling world? Grow up, don't be naive, don't miss what's real simply because you have seen the counterfeit. Point to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, the next time you meet someone hiding behind these excuses. Thank you for listening to Doctrine Forensics. If you like this material, please click, like, subscribe, and share. God bless you and your family.